So one more quick thing I'd like to just uh, briefly look at would be the assessment process. So Melissa, do you want to talk about um, how what sure. you're looking for in all those different areas sure. uh, that Margaret had mentioned before, scalp, nails, ears, gluteal cleft, yes. et cetera? So, so I think um, first just the POSI scores and the IGA scores that we talk about a lot are clinical trials. We don't use those in our clinical practice. We use PGA. I use PGA score in the clinic. Um, but most of us, I think, use BSA in the clinic. And um, we evaluate that also for candidates for biologic therapy for patients. I think it's important to um, evaluate that and document. But like you said, patients fluctuate, right? You'll see a patient one time, maybe they have 10% BSA. The next time they have eight or up a little bit, down a little bit. So I think it's important to tell patients you are gonna have a little bit of a fluctuation. But so BSA, mild psoriasis is up to 3%, three to 10% is moderate, and then greater than 10% is severe. Um, but when you mentioned those other gluteal cleft and Margaret, you were talking about the genital area, I think it's important to know that if a patient has psoriasis that's difficult to control in a special area, like palmoplantar psoriasis or genital psoriasis, scalp psoriasis, Sometimes they are candidates for systemic therapy or biologic therapy, um, even though they don't have meet that three to 10% or greater than 10% BSA. Um, but also we need to evaluate their psychosocial, like we discussed earlier, making sure that we're asking them, how do you, how do you really feel? You know, we've improved you, but are, how are you feeling? Are you happy? Usually you can tell, right, when you walk in the room, they've got a big smile on their face. And last time they were in, they were, had their head down kind of when you came in the room, at least I, I find that happens. Um, so making sure we're evaluating them in a complete way screening them for comorbidities, making sure they have a primary care provider and they're getting in for those types of screenings as well. Anything so, yeah, any additionally other? that you have on your routine for how you assess patients, not just initially, but for subsequent visits? Mm -hmm. so, so for me, one of the most important things in, in leading to our decision that we'll talk about is um, psoriatic arthritis. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they come to us as dermatology providers because they're bothered by their skin, but they haven't related the fact that they've got this back pain or this foot pain, their heel pain. They don't associate that with their skin. So one of the things that I know that we're all so engaged with now, um, not only because um, we know that one third of patients um, will likely have psoriatic arthritis, but the disability associated with it. We can fix your skin, but we can't you know, reverse that disability when it occurs. So I know that they were all very much looking at their joints because the patient isn't gonna think about that and their nails. Um, so those are um, other parts of severity that I know we all look because it's important in our decisions that lead us to management as well. I did have a patient though that came in the other day who had um, a little bit of rash here and he said, I have a rash, I think I got into something. He had a little bit here on his elbow, kind of a little bit more his forearm than actually, right? right on his elbow, and he had another place over here in his antecubital fossa, and it looked like psoriasis on his elbow, but over here kind of looked like a contact derm. So I started asking him questions, and I said, you know, do you have any in your scalp? He said, no, he didn't think so, and looked at his knees, they were clear. But then I said, do you have any in kind of the top of your crack of your bottom, is what I say to patients, because gluteal cleft, they don't know what I'm saying, right? So, and he's like, Actually, yes. And you know, I think patients think that's a weird question, but oftentimes I think they think it's yeast or sweating or somebody's been treating them for yeast or fungal infection for years and they don't realize that it's connected with the psoriasis. So I think that's an important question. That, and that is clinicians, it goes back to that total body skin check, yes. sort of inside and out, all yeah. the different pieces. And you may not get that all done, the first visit and the first go at it. But I think that that's something you constantly have to think about and ask those questions because of all the different presentations and types of disease, erythrodermic, pustular, palmer planter. There are a lot of ways that the disease can manifest itself. And as clinicians, it's our job to be aware of those and realize that patients can have multiple presentations within their life and or within their family because mm -hmm. sometimes people have other family members but they always thought it was fungal nails when in fact right. it's actually nail psoriasis that, right. that they were missing.